Ready? Mate, are you ready for episode number four? <laughs> ready to roll, clowns. <laughs> Come on, man. We've got, to, we've got to solve the problems and the challenges for these agents today. So I'm really hoping they're going to be nice and not give us any too many difficult questions today. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. There's no such thing as uh, problems, just challenges, yeah? <laughs> Absolutely. <Okay>. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so we've got our first agent on the mentors coming on episode four. Let's see. Thank you. It. Hello, Ian Q. Hello, my friend. Listen, welcome to episode number four of The Mentors. You've got myself and Matt LaHood. Say hello, buddy. Hello, Matt. Hi, Ian. How are you? I'm very well. Yourself? Good. Enjoying your Friday? Enjoying my Friday with the team. Fantastic. And, um, very, very honoured to yeah, speak to one of the great in real estate. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, um, Ian, just give us a, a little bit of um, where you work, what's your core market. And uh, how many transactions you're doing a year currently? Just so the listeners can get a bit of an idea who you are. Okay, so I've been working in the Piedmont market, Sydney Piedmont market, yep. uh, near Darling Harbour since 2007. I started my career as a leasing agent and moved into sales full time in 2012. Um, and last year transacted just over, just last year transacted 43 properties. Average sale price I do here is about two point two to two point three million. Wow! And uh, yeah, and the um, my market here is predominantly owner occupied, downsizers, families. So that's a little bit about me. Lots of growth down that area at the moment there with the uh, Barangaroo as well and all that happening. Yeah, I think with Barangaroo coming up, it sort of make our marketplace more value for money. Mm-hmm. Although it's about 20, although it's about twenty four about mm, twenty three thousand now per square meter, wow. still represents quite good value when you compare it to the Barangaroo side. Yeah, absolutely. And who's the number one agent in your area? Oh, I like to think Morton. Yeah, as a company. Good one, mate. <laughs> so, are you number one down there in your market? I do. I do hold a. I do hold about a. I do hold almost a fifty percent market share in my wow. area. Wow, that's which fantastic. Is Jackson's Landing. That's huge. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> You, Gene. All right. Well, listen, um, Matt, you're on The Mentors. This is where you ask the most pressing question and it's our job to give you some form of answer, we hope. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> so shoot away, mate. What you We're going to do our best, Ian. Yeah. Give us your question, uh, buddy. All right. Well, my question is, as, as I just said to you, I've been operating since, um, since 2012 as full-time, full-time sales. We're five or six years into it. I've, got, I've started my family, got two girls now and uh, really happy, but you know, I think it's a thing that everyone says work-life balance. But as I want to, I want to know as a, re- a real estate agent progression up to about this sort of stage, mm-hmm. personal life is becoming more hectic, and this is more of a time where I just need some more guidance and advice on that work-life balance. And I mean, Claudia, you've got three kids, and you know, how do you how do you tackle that on a daily basis? Sometimes you know, you know, take them to school. You've got the appointments in the evenings as well. Like last three nights, I didn't come home till about ten thirty from appointments. How do I, how do I manage that better? Okay, so Ian, it's Matt. I've uh, spent um, my whole life in that space with agents. Um, yes. Managed a team up to uh, um, 300 people nationally, so I've had that challenge. Most of the people I've managed have all had families mm-hmm. um, or started families and, and um, <clears throat> growing them since. And myself, um, I've been working pretty well much 30 years in the business. I've got two kids, uh, 19 and 17. So oh. totally understand where you're coming from. So first thing is, I would say to you, family always came first for me and I've always said that to anybody I've ever worked with mm-hmm. because without, the, without your family and support of your family, in, this is an industry where it gets a bit lonely. You, you know, you're out there as a bit of a lone ranger on the weekends and <clears throat> you've got your team with you, but it can be a very lonely industry. You're sort of on your own a lot mm-hmm. and um, having family and liaising with them really keeps your feet on the ground. So mm-hmm. to get the balance, and it's the eternal question, um, what we've been saying to people at your level is um, you need to build a team around you and you need to delegate. So what I find agents try to do everything themselves, they try to control the process. Mm-hmm. So I'd be strongly suggesting to start building a team around you and start including the team in all your listing presentations from every section of your business from start to finish. If you bring mm-hmm. in the team... What starts to happen, it allows you to have scale. Yes. So you've got to build a structure that allows the team to get involved with you alongside in terms of the the, – to keep them excited about it, you need to include them in the the success that you're having. So I would set up a structure within your team where when you win, they win. 
it could be a GCI number when you hit it at the gross level or the net level um, where they, you know, it could be a target. Let's say if you want to write $2 million, when you go over $2 million, they, the team gets a bonus. So everyone's rowing the boat in the same way. Mm-hmm. You could have a number of um, bonuses, you know, $1 million, one and a half, two, two and a half. And everyone's always pushing your scoreboard that every week. Or it could be number of sales. When you said you did 43 sales, it could be let's get to 60 sales and I'm going to do a team bonus. But everyone mm-hmm. has to work on every listing with me. So what happens when you start to have scale like that, you allow that – that's what buys your freedom. Because yes. if you took an, one of your coll- – if you had two, say, agents underneath you that were sort of co-agents, I call it, and mm-hmm. you took them to every listing, one of them to – and I'd split them up in price – so mm-hmm. your average sale price, you said, was around $2 million. I'd take one of those agents under $2 million with you and they specialise in that price range with you and the other agent specialises in the over $2 million sales price range. Mm-hmm. And you introduce them to the vendor from the beginning and they are working with buyers in that price range. So what that allows I you see. to do is scale out from that listing. So if you want I to see. take a week off, not go to an open that weekend, you're not the only key mm-hmm. person in the equation anymore. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so true, isn't it, Matt? It's, yeah. it's almost like you want your business to be running 365 days a year, 24-7. So if you decide, Ian, to take some time off with the family, have a, a month off in, call it Europe in July, you know, if you don't have a business that's scalable, what's going to happen is your business will suffer. You know, your business yes. stops because Ian stopped, right? Yes. And then you feel this guilt that you have to be there the whole time, which means mm-hmm. then something's going to sacrifice, something has to suffer. And that's going to be generally where agents get it wrong is the family. The family suffers. And then people start to wonder why, you know, you know, they, 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 they get separated or whatever else because they haven't put that time and effort to be with the family. So I, I totally agree with what Matt is saying is, Look at the way you can actually make your business scalable, work 365 days a year, seven days, you know, seven day, 24 seven, basically. So I, I, I would really look at that. But like what Matt said in his first comment yeah. was like family first, without a doubt. Yeah. Does that make and sense, I, Ian? Like to it does make sense, yeah. Matt. And yeah. you, what, what you just said to me, I thought that was really the goal is there. Uh, what I found, what you said to me is you introduce the, your co-agent first early on listing presentation means 100%. that there was, yeah so i think that sometimes i get that bit wrong because i feel such a good rapport with the client they always say Ian, will you be here representing me and it, when they say that it's really hard to go back no, and so go, what well, you do is you when you just say i um you took claudio to a listing with you and you'd say look claudio and i going to work on every every on this property together sometimes yes. you're going to see me sometimes you're going to see claudio I'll determine um, which is the best person you see because I don't have the rapport with every buyer in the market. Claudio has the rapport with some, some I have the rapport. So if I think, and, and that immediately allows you to scale out. Uh, yes. Makes sense. Makes sense. Magic. Thank you. Mate, Ian, Matt, pleasure. But hey, Matt, I just want to ask you a question. What about like an agent out there? That's probably within their first three years. They don't have a team around them. How can they incorporate that that balance? That's an easy fix, Cloud. So my my belief in real estate today, it, it's not a it's not a game for silos. I think you need to have a team around you. Now, if you can't afford a team, yep. there's always another agent in the office you can do things with. Right. Okay. So another single agent in the yep. office or yep. in your network if you've got multiple offices. Yep. So I always, when I had my own team, I always had another team yes. that I work with. Right. I used to sell. Okay. So, um, you know, Bethwin Richards, myself, Benny Colley, myself, we, Steve Chen, we did a lot of stuff together. Yes. So my team and their team would work together. Right. So we'd have more scale then. So, yeah, right. Um, it's easy to – if you're just a single person, um, and I, I started off as a single agent, I used to bring other agents in with me to help me scale up. Yeah, right, exactly. But the biggest problem in this industry is nobody likes to share. I've, all, I've given more commission away, Ian, than I've actually earned, you know. Yeah. But then wow. what used to happen is more commission would come back to me because mm. people would be, no, I was the one that was referring and the mm. generous one. Yes. So yes. if you think like that amongst your team, you're the one that gives all the referrals out. It's a karmically world that we live in. You'll yeah. get the referrals back. Absolutely. And that's why Matt LaHood has got his shit together. <laughs> and that's what we strive for in our lives, mister. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, gold. Gold. Okay. Thank you. Well, Ian, we hope that this – episode here today but you joining us as uh and your question that you've given us 
has answered your question. And Ian, um, just congratulations to Ewan and what the, he's done down there. He, he's got a really good reputation in the industry. Oh, well, I don't know if you know this, Matt, but Ewan Morton now is the REI president. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the director, <laughs> not president, director. Oh, so great. there you go. He's, he's a quality guy. I've seen him speak a few times. So congratulations on what you've achieved down there. You deserve the market yeah. share. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Ian, thanks for joining us here on The Mentors on Episode 4, mate. Have yourself a great weekend and we'll talk next time. Definitely. Thank you, guys. Thank you, my friend. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.